So uh, we're recording the uh, program, and I just overheard a, uh, a conversation. So you call him, and he says, are we recording today? Yes, he yesterday asked me, is there a show today, meaning Monday? No, Sunday. He said, is there a show tomorrow? I said, no, it's holiday Monday. I said, not till Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, and I just called him, and I said, are you going to join us? And he said, there's a show today? <laughs> yeah, I heard And I said, part. yeah, as per, as per our conversation. And he goes, okay, give me five minutes. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, you know, listen, we're all of an age where, you know, some things are going to fall through the cracks. That's for sure, my friend. That's for sure. A lot of things fall through the cracks now. And you know what? You don't care as much no. as you used to when things no, fall true. through the cracks. Oh, no, that's for sure. Um, I find myself not forgetting things, but like, uh, you know, just having to really make sure that I'm remembering what I'm trying to remember. For instance, a few moments ago, I was here and I was trying to re uh, configure my login credentials for something and it had my old credit card on it. And I, I have it saved on my computer, but I didn't have the security number. Right. So I went all the way up to my bedroom, which, as you know, is three floors from here. I get mm-hmm. up there and then I to get my wallet so I can see the back of the credit card. Then I come all the way back down. And just because I put my wallet in the other pocket where I normally keep it in my left pocket for a second mm-hmm. there, I actually thought I'd gone all the way up there and forgotten to get it. <laughs> like, honestly, just for a quick second, I was like, no, did you not get the card that you went all the way up there to get? Right. Um, but. That's, uh, you know, that's because we're 100, uh, between you and I, we're 132 years old. Yeah, I know. And it keeps coming up and up and up. What was I thinking about? Oh, yesterday with Dahl and Dan. Dan dined with us yesterday. And we were talking about a trip we took to Florida in 2015. And just reminiscing a bit about it for whatever reason. And I said, guys, you realize... In November, that'll be nine years ago. And we were talking about it like it was yesterday. Yeah. Like, it it really is hard to believe that was nine years ago. You know, and there's so many things that come along. Again, when you're a kid, nine years is an eternity. When you get to be our age, nine years is the blink of an eye. Well, this, uh, we're only, what is it, August? And and that's the other thing, too. Like, in my mind, I keep thinking it's like... You know, early June, but uh, it'll be September soon. And uh, at the end of this month, on the th- on just after Labor Day, I moved in here in uh, 2016. And in my mind, 2016, just like you described, you know, it feels like, oh, I, I just moved in. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to do, though. We're going to, uh, we, we want to concentrate this first part on a couple things, which is this is the last day to be part of the, uh, the big uh, beer tasting a pizza party on the patio at Stonehooker tomorrow night. So let's not forget. Here's to the guys with the cool podcast about weather and dicks and getting old fast. Interesting. All you need room is waiting for you. Get it now, you're not real fans. Interesting, all Canadian brew. You know what to do. Interesting for the beach or the dock. Going dance, got a big cock. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's all set. Uh, Hummel and Fred at Hummel and Fred Radio. Dot com subject line beer tasting something to that uh, effect and we will uh, get you in hopefully seeing you tomorrow night starting from seven to nine and uh, we're all going to be there dan uh, when he finally shows up on this program will confirm does he is he does he know that's tomorrow night yes he does we discussed that although that was last night he could have forgotten by now <laughs> that's um, right. pizza yes, he, he plans on being there yes he, uh, he would have to be well, he has to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a great, I, there's so many, I'm not so many, but there's quite a few 
Dan Duran related emails that came through since we last did a show. And I think you know what they were about. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, the pole vaulter. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, back to uh, tomorrow night. The uh, food supplied by Pizza E Dolce. They're uh, going to have a bunch of pizzas there. And, of course, we'll give you an opportunity to taste the beer. And then, you know, because we can't just give away free beer. We're not in that business. But we're going to give you a free sample taste. Uh, I think it's about seven ounces. Yes. And then there will be lots of Hummel and Fred beer in cans. You know, the signature cans that we have now. Yes. Available for purchase on the patio. Now... The run of this beer has been so successful. I'm right, we're not shitting you. It's gone so well. They have sold. <laughs> they have sold more than they thought they would sell. So we're in a situation. If you wanted to purchase beer to take home tomorrow night, we may have to restrict you to half a dozen. If you want more than that on site, you'll be able to place your order. They'll deliver it right to your house when the next batch is ready. It's in the kettle right now, yeah. ready to go, but it won't be available tomorrow night like en masse yeah. to buy. And, and So you understand? Yes. Uh and mm. trust us when we say, you know, we were hoping, oh, there's Dan Duran, but he's upside down. <laughs> Stand by. We were, <laughs> we, mm-hmm. we were hoping it would go well, but, you know, it's not really the humble and Fred way for something to go this well. But that's, yes. that's where we're at. It's gone very, very well. And this is the situation. It's hum- this this part's very humble and Fred. Hey, it's it's quite successful. Bummer. We can't let you buy too much. And let's be honest, we're going to the Stonehooker Brewery, 866 Lakeshore East uh, in Mississauga. They have other products, too, like the Humble and Fred beer in our, again, our great cans will be available. But they have other products you might want to try uh, tomorrow night as well. I mean, will be available. Plus, beyond pizza, if that's not quite enough for you, they will also have their little kitchen open. So you can purchase maybe something a little more substantial or whatever you choose. So we've thought of all... um, all angles have we not and i think from what i understand from this long convoluted meeting we had last uh friday or whenever it was thursday or friday Mm -hmm. humble and fred's interesting all canadian ale is available in draft like you can it's like you can have a draft beer of that but it's the cans that are the cans are the problem we sold too many but if you mm-hmm. want to have a, a a drink of this beer in draft form or in a you know just in a glass, is that clear to everybody? Well, it should be. Uh, it's going right. to be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan Duran has finally joined us. So, are you all right? Uh, everything okay? I know you're a little bit. Uh, it's chaos over there in the Duran trailer. <laughs> yes, it is uh, uh, chaotic right now. But, you know, things are going to calm down at the moment. <laughs> so this wasn't, you weren't aware we were going to, this was the day that after the holiday Monday that we were going to do a show Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. So I got mixed up and I even asked Fred about it. And, you know, it's one of those things where you go, uh, well, because we were off Monday and a lot of people take vacations this week. I just, in my brain, I just thought this was the week that we were taking off. No, next week, so, actually. We're going to be off. Next week uh, is the week. Yeah, yeah, we're working Tuesday, Wednesday this week, everybody. And then next week, we're going to be off for, uh, we haven't taken much time this summer. And uh, Dan, just before, because I was going to ask ask you to do this if you were, you know, signed in when you normally do. I don't know what you have planned for the news, but can you do the uh, RFK dead bear story? Because I, I just, uh, <laughs> I'm just really curious how, how this is now. What's he had he has um insects living in his brain and and now he has a dead bear story so yeah he brought it back okay for some reason he brought it back with roseanne Barr. He explained the whole thing to her oh yeah i saw that it was crazy yeah yeah uh, anyway crazy and uh, i mean he is he serious but again you election night in the united states you can actually uh, you know check his name <laughs> it's just crazy <laughs> he's an option wow something else hey by the way um as far as tomorrow night goes we will also have we should mention this uh live entertainment johnny barefoot is a great live performer who uh, performs regularly at uh, stonehooker yep. on the stonehooker stage and he's offered to play for us tomorrow night which is a nice gesture and thank you 
Yeah, it's going to be very entertaining with Johnny Barefoot. Uh, and uh, just quickly back to the RFK, though. Isn't it interesting? That is it interesting? <laughs> is it that in this world that we we live in, that a guy who's got insects or spiders living in his brain and uh, once put a dead bear somewhere in Central Park isn't even close to the weirdest dude in the fucking race. So, you know, mm-hmm. that, like in other years, that would be, he'd be the weirdest guy. Uh, speaking of which, um, <laughs> I, our good friend Brittle Star uh, is going to be on the program today and uh, I will have to find the song that... Uh, that he put out to, it's very really cute anyway Stuart is his name I, what's, what's his last name <sighs> well he's Brittle Star that's all he needs no, all I, he no, cares I know, about but I, I, I really we, I know his, it's, it's terrible Brittle Star comedian here we go his real name is uh, Stuart Reynolds and uh, he's uh, he'll be on the show. He's been talking, uh, you know, he's been doing some stuff about the uh, the Trump stuff and the weirdness. And uh, I have a, he put out a little song and I'll be playing for you. Hey, now that Dan's here, we should probably start the show. Right on. Danny, are you Sounds ready? Sounds good, yeah. Yeah, is, uh, is, am I sounding okay? Yeah, you, you know, sound like, fine. Mm-hmm. We can, whatever, uh, you know, things yeah. we do before the show. Sure, normally we do that stuff yeah. before the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. When I'm here before the show um, starts. Are you emotionally ready to start the show, Dan? Yeah, I could do All so. All right, here we go. Okay. This episode of Humble and Fred is being broadcast to the world from our state-of-the-art Humble and Fred studio in Toronto, from our lakeside facility in the Corthus, featuring a sunset viewing platform, and from the trailer next door with the Dennis Duranis bust. I'm Dan Duran, broadcasting live from the Mike Boyd Zoom Theater, and brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chamber. Neighbors Plan, 4-on-1, Bodog, and Lender's Choice Mortgages. And now, here's the Ambassador Saskatchewan and level-headed Fred. It's Humble and Fred. So, Dan, before you uh, signed in, I was telling Fred that we got a lot of emails. Several people sent the... uh, the video of the pole vaulter. Do you know the story of the pole vaulter at the Olympic Games? Yes, the pole vaulter. Yeah, he got uh, hung up. As he was going, for you people who don't know, as he was going over the whatever that thing is called, as he was pole vaulting, uh, just as he was about to clear the bar, his giant dink caught and robbed him of a, uh, of a vault. And uh, so many of our listeners... Sent us the video with, oh, I didn't know Dan Duran was in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> oh, yeah, Dan. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not sure how well known that pole vaulter is or whether he could have meddled or whatever. But I'll tell you, you know, if you weren't going to win anything, it's a pretty good thing to have happen to you. At least, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people want to talk to him about that oh, over yeah. the next few weeks. Yeah. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, it's so graphic. Like, there's no question what happened when they zoom in on it. Like, you that's know, what happened. D- Fred? Is it Fred? <laughs> I was going yeah. to <laughs> Remember? I was mm. going to death. Mm. Excuse been? me. Um, mm. I'm a little out of practice. Is it Fred? Uh, it, it's not. You don't even have to zoom in. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's it's just there. And it's like, oh, yeah. it starts to sort of <clears throat> flop over as it's going over the bar and... And then it just it's just like a cartoon. It's like a ding. Yeah. Yeah. It grabs the bar and yeah. Yeah. It's Perfect crazy with a camera. It was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. In a twisted way, this could actually work out more to his benefit than if he just just like finished sixteenth or something, right? So we'll see. I'm trying to think of all the products he might be able to, you know, endorse now. Who knows? Where was he from? I have, n- I have yeah. seriously, I, have, I, I think it's terrible. The way I have no knowledge of the name, the country he's from. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, but I do know that many of our listeners online and on, you know, DMing me, DMing us or whatever. Have you seen this? Dan Duran at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> not, to, not to be critical of the guy, but you'd think that. He'd put his junks, you know, he'd tuck it in somewhere because of the possibility of this. Wouldn't that be a standard operating procedure for a pole vaulter to keep your well, your junk, you know? You would think, though, but that's hours and hours of training. Right. 
And you'd think, you know, if that was a possibility, it would have happened before, you know? It's just one of those situations that day, that time, it actually happened. Because I got to imagine... If that was an issue, it would have. It, it would have as come you up. Say, it, it would have been. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say it would have come up in training. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Ruder just. I better uh, strap that down under exactly because I keep knocking the bar off. Uh, Ruder just uh, weighed in and said the guy's from France. Well, Dan, but you ask a good question, but you're really the only one that can answer. It's not. It's not <laughs> like like you know. I don't know what Fred and I don't have to worry about it getting in the way of very much stuff. But you, <laughs> well, that's it, right. Is it bothersome yeah. in your day to day life, like when you're shopping or you're, you know, uh, doing things around uh, the the campsite? Uh, you know, junk management's important and. Uh uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just thought that something, a sport with, uh, mm-hmm. it, it's so important. You know, you, you spend you, all your life training. And Can you give us two or three, four, five, ten examples, Dan, of <laughs> when your junk has gotten in the way? <laughs> can, can you give us two to three to ten examples, Dan? Like, you know, <laughs> going, is, it, is way, it worrisome? Like- is it worrisome, mm-hmm. perhaps, when you're going through a revolving door, you're always afraid of getting it lodged in the in-between there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about going through elevator, turnstiles? An elevator door closes. Exactly. Ah. Mm-hmm. Going through a turnstile, do you have to wait? Do you use it sometimes to shoo away things? Mm-hmm. Anyway, the guy's from France. Thanks, Ruger, for that. And, uh, and you know, you make a good point. Uh, you know, you're the good point, man, Fred, that uh, he may get uh, more fame out of this than if he uh, just, you know... Had a oh, decent have, showing. I have lots of fun. With, if the guy's got the right personality, he can have a ton of fun with it. He can ride it a bit. No well, doubt. Yeah. Or maybe he's someone like our good friend here. Maybe he's just shy and he's, it's mm-hmm. not something he's wanted to celebrate, you know, because, you know, the funny thing is the, the, the of the three of us, the, the guy with sort of the more modest personality got the... Uh, the biggest mm-hmm. gift from baby Jesus and you and I would just imagine <laughs> one of us had that thing. We would, I would, I'd make, oh. I'd be doing a puppet show. I'd be, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be having its face painted and you know, <laughs> anyway, Dan, um, uh, yeah. So the long I'm weekend's sure he's over. very popular in Olympic village. I mean, it must be kind yeah. of embarrassing. Well, there's all through. kinds of shenanigans going on. Yeah. Um, on the Olympics. Did yeah. you see over the weekend, this Ethan Katzberg, the Canadian guy won the hammer throw. Do you ever say that event is crazy the way they spin around and then fling the the big ball on the chain like he just wiped the floor with yeah, everybody. Oh yeah. it was from, fascinating. He's from the Nimo uh, and yeah. that was Canada's first gold for hammer throwing. Yeah. Now, Dan, with your with the size of your hammer, you <laughs> you, could, you, could, yeah. can you imagine putting something on the end of that and maybe you could enter mm. it in the hammer throwing. Yes. Yeah. I didn't even know it was a sport until now. Oh, yeah. yeah. They put the ball on a chain and they throw it? Yeah, it's one of those, you know, it's one of those Olympic sports. You, you're never going to see, you know, hammer throw night in Canada or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> but it was crazy. Ba-dum, like ba-dum. some guys, some guys like, uh, you know, the runner ups were like 78, 79, whatever it was, meters, whatever. But uh, he was like 84. He just absolutely crushed them. It was great. Uh, there was a couple great thing to watch. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And we won uh, some other medals. I have the uh, medal count here. I think we're currently in 13th place. I did turn on the Olympics a couple of times. I watched, uh, obviously, obviously, I, I watched some of the uh, final hours of the men's Olympic golf event, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, one of our Canadians did nicely. Corey Connors, I think, finished either 10th or 11th. But it was a great ending to uh, the golf tournament. It was very exciting. The last nine holes eventually won by the USA's uh, Scotty Shelfer, who is also the number one golfer in the world, and proved it again. But uh, I did. I watched something. I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, the f- sort of medley swimming. Do you know what that is, Dan? It's like uh, 200 and 400 meters medley. And the medley I don't is. still. Yeah. Pardon me? A medley of what? Like a medley distances? of swimming strokes. So they do like butterfly, they do front crawl, they do backstroke. And it's really quite something to see. Because that, I don't know what that, what that one is where they, they, they is it, I guess it's the butterfly where they come out of the water and they look like dolphins or whatever. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's at times, it's very arduous. But at times it sort of looks funny to me because it's like 
all of a sudden they're just switching strokes now they're on their back and they're which one are you talking oh the one on the back is the back stroke obviously yeah but there's, then the, there's the breast stroke oh maybe it's the breast stroke where they come bobbing right. out of the water you know mm-hmm. and then there's yeah. the butterfly breast stroke butterfly front crawl or whatever but uh, i found that of, an interesting uh, thing to watch yeah and speaking of uh, swimming you know uh, lumby on the show several weeks ago talking about the sign is it the sign sen sen river sen river uh belgium has withdrawn because one of their triathlon uh, athletes who swam in the river uh got sick you really? know it's a big issue now they've been having to do water testing and apparently today they will release a report is the river actually uh fit for swimmers and i saw interviews with other athletes they don't care they've prepared all these years they're just going to jump in that river they don't give a shit there's others really concerned but again in belgium an athlete got very ill from being in the river from the poopy water yeah yeah, not very good yeah the e coli apparently was over the top so uh back to canadian swimmers Uh, summer mcintosh won another gold medal in the women's 200 meter individual medley so that's similar to what i'm talking about and uh josh liendo and Ilya Karun shared the podium in the men's 100-meter butterfly, winning silver and bronze medals. But the story I wanted to concentrate on, because I, 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 I saw it a bunch of times this weekend, and I just, I, I'm not, I should have asked you before the show, because I don't want to put you on the spot. But what exactly was going on with all the boxing trans controversy? Was it boxing yeah. or wrestling? Because to be no, honest with you, women. Yeah. I, I really didn't pay much attention to it, except I kept seeing it over and over again. You know what I'm talking about, Dan? Yeah, uh, there was a woman that uh, that was people thought was a man. I think that's the thing, right? Because of the testosterone levels and the right. way she looked, or something like that. But she was not trans; she was actually a woman with an XY chromosome or something like that. So yeah, how for, did that for competition? So, but of course, the internet went crazy. The right wing people went mental, and uh, it brought up a lot of uh, controversy. So is that basically it, Fred, that it was a a young woman who they thought was a man? Yeah, you know, the way the story was presented earlier in the week, I think it was an Italian boxer. She literally gave up in the first 30 seconds after taking a couple of heavy shots. And then the story exploded. And again, I saw, you know, because I don't know, it's a train wreck. I'm actually attracted to it sometimes because of its evilness. Somehow that titillates me. Fox News, of course, they're all over it. You know, Mm. a male just beat the shit out of an Italian woman. Isn't this awful? Anyway, they didn't give it any time. And as it unfolds, you know, they talk to people in her town, her parents. She's always been a woman. Always. So the only question might be, you know, performance enhancing drugs. Apparently no trace of that. But there's actually a situation where a female can contain male whatever. Now I'm starting to talk over my head chromosomes or x y's or you know v's um Mm -hmm. um, she was was an algerian boxer uh named iman khalif so it was a tough one it was you know and then the ioc you know they looked into it and then they just and they gave her a pass said no like we can't prevent this person from you know taking part in this and now there's all sorts of controversy around it and as you say the intolerant right they don't they they don't want an explanation no what they want is they want a man beating the shit out of a woman so that they can have something to talk about you know it's interesting that you say oh another interesting thing uh Mm -hmm. because i i knew enough about this whatever the controversy was i knew there was a controversy but it was a reaction from the right that i found amusing slash disgusting because what they did is they took this story that we've just mildly explained and they conflated it to this is what Kamala Harris wants to bring to the LA Olympics and when it comes like literally that's how I don't know how they got from there to here but they went from (laughs) this situation which again you know there's some science to it to this is what Kamala Harris wants to bring to America I know Dan Dahl and I had this conversation last night well dining. You know, these people all, you know, the, the, the whole thing about transgender and these kids, 11, 12, 13 years old, who think they're the opposite sex and, you know, how it revs so many people up that uh, 
you know, they don't know, and, uh, you know, it's the far left and woke that's allowing them. You know, there's got to be something to this. And as I said, and again, I'm not a scientist, okay? I'm not oh, wait a, a scientist. Second. You're, wait, you're not? <laughs> I'm not a scientist, no. I thought you were all these years <laughs> but, a scientist. You know, I'm continuously reading about food additives, what's put in our food, what the government has allowed to be put in our food over the years. You know, these kids of this age, what's in their systems that maybe we didn't have or what's it doing, how it's affecting you? We have no idea. So all these people that want to, you know, jump to that conclusion that it's wokeness and the kids don't know, you know, there might be examples of that. But I think there's more to it. Why? Why? What's happening to these kids well and, of course there and, is and and does it come actually from what we're putting in our mouths and i'm i, I can't help but i mean think i think I, there's listen, a I don't totally uh buy into that i mean i would have loved to have okay, around, been around the table last night with dull dan and fred hey everybody it's another episode of dull dan and fred <laughs> um I believe that some part of what we're experiencing societally has to do with what you're saying, because it would just make sense. You and I and uh, Daniel here were raised Mm in the 60s and 70s when, you know, uh, regulatory uh, uh, things were different. What I'm trying to say is that, you know. Oh, yeah. And and as you say, things have been allowed and different. Whether they've been allowed or there's there's been a a growth in um, the way products are. Uh, kept uh, in, in what, what am I saying? Trying to say, but kept it's uh, preservatives. Preservatives, the, exactly. Yeah, the, so, uh, yeah, additives additives all that stuff's different. We sure. didn't have, but just, and, and, you know, and it has to be approved before it's used. And, so, and I'm not even yeah. talking specifically about children who identify as other genders, but but mm-hmm. but also there's a societal shift in recognizing and being open to the idea that you know we all grew up with people that mm-hmm. probably were feeling some of these feelings and and my point is this Mm -hmm. didn't didn't just change in 50 years this this has been going on a long time all throughout history there have been Mm -hmm. people that identified as other other feeling other genders or and i'm not just talking about homosexuality i'm just talking about people that felt odd in their bodies and there was Mm -hmm. never in in other cultures they there's in japanese cultures in particular Mm -hmm. there's other cultures that celebrate men who identify with women as as women so some mm-hmm. of it's maybe they're preservatives, but some of it is has always been there. It's just never mm-hmm. been allowed to be expressed. That's what that was all about. Society yeah. repressing, yeah, everything that you know around. Sex. <clears throat> well, I spent some time late last week with a fellow, a, a gay man, and he told a, a few interesting stories about. You know, being a teenager and having girlfriends and having sex with the girlfriends and but deep down knowing he was a gay man and then at 19 just said, screw it, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm going to live my life. And, uh, you know, lots of those stories, too. But and again, this is back in the 70s and 80s, you know, when you coming out was a big issue. Um but then just finally saying, I'm done. I'm, g- I'm going to yeah. be me. I'll, I'll, and it's and quite I'll liberating you. to hear those stories. And I'll guarantee you, you know, that I, I have a, there's lots of people that have a, a story of, uh, I knew a guy when I moved to Vancouver, Dan, I won't say his name, but I moved to Vancouver and he, we were both sort of announcers at that radio station. And, mm-hmm. and I, you know, some number of years later, he killed himself. And the story was that he was just so closeted that he couldn't face it. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, sure. that's happened a lot, a lot of times in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm not saying, but, but I, by the way, the, the hypocrisy of the conservatives, in whether it's Canada or the states or around the world, is about being so outraged about wokeness and transgender children, but yet... Yet they don't seem to want to talk about all the children. There's been more children affected by, yes, I'm going to say priests, Dan, because that's still a real thing, than have ever been affected by what we're talking about. Like, there's children walking around the planet now that are, that they're li- or children who are now adults, whose lives have been devastated by that. And yet that doesn't seem to be a top of mind issue for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's maybe not as outrageous as, for whatever reason, on the outrage scale. 
for a lot yeah, of conservatives. It seems more yeah. weird to them. Yeah, that, I know. But one, you know. one thing I would say, you know, you, we got to watch what we say here because then we're just playing that game. You can't say conservatives. I'm a conservative. There's lots of conservatives. You know, CNN every night has conservatives on, um, you know, Republicans who are pushing back against all this stuff. So you can't say conservatives to be, you know, not to nitpick, but you can't. Well, OK, I think that's you can. not I mean, fair. Listen, you're not really a conservative, to be honest with you. I mean, well, you're yeah. not. I mean, you're a liberal. Just face it. You're a very liberal guy. So no, I don't know how you I identify disagree. still. Well, I don't. I, you're super liberal. So you, now you're telling me what I am. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'm saying you're a very if you're like, no, what, is, what, is, cons- what is con- OK? I know, but I'm fiscally conservative. Yeah, but conservative doesn't mean, you know, you're anti-gay, you're anti-transgender, you know, you're anti, you know, socialism. Yeah, it does. I'd say that, you know, OK, maybe it maybe right wing, if okay. you, you know, well, if yeah, you're but, a right but winger. The, but the, the right. conservative. Yeah. OK, I'm just I'm sort of just no, dicking But you around. know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm right just, wing means you're on the wing like you're on yeah, the far. I, yeah, you're a wing that. nut. But OK, but yeah. listen, we're we're all conservative. Everyone we know is somewhat conservative fiscally, but almost nobody I know is conservative socially. And that's what I mean. When I say you're My, a liberal, I mean, you're a liberal guy. You're not you're not you're not judging of other people. You're not. You don't, you don't, uh, you're not, a, you know, you're not all about, uh, you know, you're not anti-abortion. I can name 10 things that would make nope. you not a, not a conservative. And, yeah. And there's lots of people that would be identify as conservative aren't against the, I'm just cautioning that, you know, to tag just, you know, we get upset when other people are tagged certain ways. You just got to watch that kind of thing. That's all. Yeah. I, okay, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that when I so, so you know when I say conservative, I, you know I mean right wing conservative. I don't mean people that are like mm-hmm. for you know maybe less intervention from government because listen the cons- the conservative mm-hmm. that you are I know. in Canada mm-hmm. would be a far left liberal in the states. Yes. Maybe it's better put that the uh, conservative name has been besmirched. <laughs> well, I, and, by, and I don't think. By, uh, I, I, listen, I'll never miss an opportunity try. to use besmirched in a sentence. <laughs> God However, damn it. You know, I had um, a conversation with a guy on the weekend, and I found it r- somewhat disturbing because I would have never believed he was. I always identified him as a very intelligent guy. He's a, an executive and so into the trump thing i was just taken aback you know and um anyway the point is you you just never know who's out there and how they're thinking you know what i mean and again i told him i'm a conservative and he said the same thing well no you're not because i'm pushing back against a convicted rapist who he's willing to just forgive all that stuff. Policy on one side, character on the other. Yeah. And I will put up with that character to get that policy. I, just I, unbelievable. Well, two quick things. First of all, mm-hmm. is it somebody in, who, who in your circle, would I know them? No. Okay. No, it's the first person that I'm that close to that I found out, thought that way. How do I not know and, them then? You just don't. Okay. You well, just don't. The, the second thing is... Mm-hmm. When you, because I, because again, I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a student of the game, much as yourself. And mm-hmm. when people talk about, because again, I see it online, and I interact with some of these people uh, digitally. When they talk about his policy, and I'm like, okay, really? what about his? Pardon me, sir. I said, really, <laughs> not that kind of digitally, Dan. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but when people talk about policy, I'm like, okay, well, show me the policy that was so great: jobs, I know. business, yeah. debt. X, there, there's 10 things. If I was really smart, I could name at least a couple. But his policies were shit. The lowest. There was there was. In fact, no, they know. talk about the border, the the border during the Trump years. It was actually more porous than it is now. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. When, that's when I, when I when I pushed back there about saying you're not conservative because you're you're socially you're a, you're a liberal. We're all liberal. Mm-hmm. Everybody I know mm-hmm. is somewhat liberal when it comes to people mm-hmm. and human beings. But uh, again, my, my point through that was me and this guy, if there was an election in Canada, we would probably both vote conservative. We'll go, although I'm jumping the queue here because I've got to see what the situation will be up here. But it was interesting talking to him because he kept going, leaning on, oh, look at the border. And I said, well, again, really, what does that mean? 
matter to you? And I said, it's been blown out of proportion. And of course, there's an excuse for that. You know, fentanyl and all the t- oh, yeah. all the talking, talking points. Point. Yeah, yeah. And then it was yeah. he was really hung up. And then I'm getting it. And then I'm getting ho- a homophobia, like a lot to do with transgender and gay kids mm, yeah, in yeah. schools and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it was like, my, I, I can't believe this anyway. And it almost became glassy eyed, you know, when he was talking to me and it was like, I, I, I honestly, I can't believe this. But he was saying it. And um, then he told me about this guy. Have you ever heard of Tom McDonald? No. He's no. a Canadian rapper. And he does very well on his own, but he's a right wing Canadian rapper. Is he, he um, you know, huh? Is he related to old McDonald? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, he's he's a right wing rapper. Sorry sorry to inject, sorry to inject some classic Humble and Fred nonsense, but please continue. (laughs) So he's a, a cousin of old McDonald. Anyway, he said to me, you know, this guy, Tom McDonald, you ever heard of him? And I said, no. And he said, it's a Canadian rapper. He did this the morning after the shooting. Uh, he did this um, this rap song, and it's fantastic. It just says everything you want to hear, um, everything that makes sense. So then I watched it. It was like two minutes like of nonsense, right? Like all the stolen election, the, oh, yeah. the Antifa, and... And I'm, I just thought, you know, this, this is what makes the world go around. Yeah. Like, I look at that and it's absolute, complete nonsense. I don't know if you want to call it up, but I, um, uh, I, well, I'm, I'm getting ready to switch gears here quickly. But uh, okay, but I'm just saying, Ed, you know, uh, to to him, like dead on to me, just nonsense. Well, and explain. to any right, to any nor- I was going to say right thinking, but to any person with a bit of sense of the of the real mm-hmm. world. See, the, the thing is, and mm-hmm. we had, you know, we've said what I'm about to say many times, mm-hmm. which is there was a time where you and I, me and Lumby, me and my friend Lou Skeezes, could have conversations where I didn't all, or Dan, Dan and uh, being the sort of leftist, most, most left of all of us, but I was certainly more on the Dan Duran side of socialism than say with these people i've mentioned lou you lumby and and over the many t- over the 30 years i've known all of you guys we're more alike than we've ever been but but the people like you're talking about old mcdonald's friend there um mm-hmm. because we can't because no people can no longer agree on a on a on a set of right. truths like we can't that's it, right if you believe the election yeah. stolen there's nothing else for us to say mm-hmm. because we can't have discussions like we did back in the day when we'd be sitting around going well i think this policy is better for this or that because once you don't believe in anything what, an, what, what do they call that a, a, a set of common facts of how the world works Howard, from 2006 to what was it, 2014, Stephen Harper was the prime minister of this country, and I liked him. I agreed with what he did. I thought he was the right guy at the right time. That wasn't easy, you know, and honestly. But we could sit by the fire here, Dan and I and other people are liberal and absolutely despise Stephen Harper. They could never really come up with a reason why, other than the fact that he was conservative. But... You know what I mean? It, it wasn't easy, but you could have those conversations because Stephen Harper, he didn't rape women. He didn't bang porn stars when his wife was. Uh, he didn't lie constantly. Mm-hmm. He didn't deny elections, you know? Yeah. No, I, so. I, absolutely. And, and, and mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if we're going to get have time, but, you know, it's it's what I wrote down here because I have some clips. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I have some audio. But right. it's it's the and it's, it's Trump, but it's also the movement, the conservative movement. And when I say it, you know, I mean the extreme conservative movement, which, by the way, yes. one of the reasons I push back on you is you're not it, sure. It may not be fair to say all conservatives, but the conservative movement, as we know it in modern day Canadian and American politics mm-hmm. is not what you're talking about supporting Stephen Harper for 10 years. It's it's. Yeah. It's it's part of this. It's this cult where what Donald Trump has done he's normalized all this behavior. He's made it normal for a guy to be 34 convict, 34 counts, felon, convicted felon. It's normal for him to still be able to run for president. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to do the bear story, because that's just Mm -hmm. how that that's just how that how that guy could still be on the ballot now after all the nonsense he has said. So that's what it's sort of frustrating for all of, well, at least for me, because 
if we can no longer agree that there's a sort of accepted, uh, there are some things we accept, which is, you know, elections are fair and, and they're complete. You know, that's we, we have no conversation left. What can we say? Right. Quickly, just a story and an example of the polarization and the separation and the divisiveness. This guy I was talking to that I met last week and did as well. Um, lives in in Florida now and he was on a cruise and when he was on a cruise he met these a couple that he really hit it off with he really really liked them they had tons of fun and then they found out they only lived about 30 minutes apart in Florida so of course when they get back they thought ah we gotta get together so they did and again they're about 30 minutes south of him so he gets in the car and he drives to the house and as he pulls up there's two big Trump signs on the garage now, these are, these are people that he enjoyed every minute he was with them on the cruise. Politics never came up. Wait, I'm sorry. I got confused. You mean the guy, the Trump guy that you to- talked to or another guy you talked to? I thought you were talking about the, the you said this. We're still, I thought we were still talking about the Trump guy that you, that you got into a conversation with. No, no, I'm just talking about the guy I met last week. Oh, this, this, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah you confused man. it. Yeah, because you, yeah, okay. we were. So I'm sorry. You yes. mean the, okay. the the gay guy you met last week? Yes, I see. Okay, that guy. Got it. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm talking about two guys at once here. Yes, like that guy. Anyway, he pulls up the driveway and there's two Trump signs. He didn't want to go in the house. He just didn't want to go in the house. He just he thought this is too creepy. So he sucked that up and he went in and he had, he said sort of a pleasant evening and then politics come up a couple of times and then the wife said, you know, don't talk about that. Anyway, at the end of the evening, he made it a little shorter than he thought it would be and he left and he said he'll never have contact with those people again. Yeah. He'll never speak to them. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's kind never. of what I'm saying. Like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you could have, mm-hmm. you could have a conversation and be friends with people that didn't yeah. think exactly like you did, mm-hmm. because we all accepted a certain commonality amongst us. Uh, Dan, do whatever story you want, but if that, you know, have a look at the bear story and maybe we can fill people in. Uh, we're yeah. going to be uh, spending some time with uh, one of the most popular people online in Canada. He does a lot of very, very funny uh, satire. He's a clever guy. Stuart Reynolds, a.k.a. Brittle Star, will join us shortly. In the meantime, here's Freddie P., a.k.a. Fred Patterson, a.k.a. Uh, Fred Chambers of, Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan, Canada's number one group benefits plan for small business. Yeah, if you have a small business, go to chamberplan.ca today. This will work for you. It will if you've been, uh, you know, looking around for a benefits package uh, for you and the people that uh, work for you. This is the ticket. 30,000 Canadian businesses are part of it. Uh, they've been around for 40 years. Uh, it's a non-profit situation, so they really keep a mind to costs. They, you know, hold the line of costs. Of course, they're going to bump up a bit, but unlike, you know, the private companies that can hammer you, uh, they have a good system going here. Take the time. Find out what's available. You can buy in at different levels. Something will work for you. And, uh, again, provide this for your employees. Prescriptions and dental and different kinds of therapy. They have the Teladoc system. If something specific ails you, they can direct you to the right guy. It's fantastic. I've used that feature, and it works swimmingly. Yes, it did. Have you Chambers of Commerce. Yes, I have. That's cool. Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan Canada's number one group benefits plan for small business. Like you've actually got on the phone with Teladoc? That's interesting. Because, you know, what a lot lot of people do in my friend circle, they just call me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, you're too expensive. (laughs) Um, We're just going to get, let me just uh, let uh, Stuart know we're about to uh, put him in here. Just stand by. Stuart, please stand by. Stand by. Uh, Freddie's going to be talking about uh, Bodog, obviously, later. But uh, why don't we just check in and see what Bodog has to say about them own selves? Feeling stuck on the sidelines? Hey, watch where you're walking, man. When life gives you too much to tackle? I'm going to need that draft tomorrow. You know it's time to play. It's easy to find your next favorite game at Bodog.net. Get the latest sports odds and free tips to help you go all the way this football season. Visit Bodog.net today. Hashtag 
make a play. Well, for uh, quite some time, this gentleman has uh, made Canadians smile, laugh, think, question, where where are they from? (laughs) He is uh, highly amusing, and he's, you know, here's the thing about this, our next guest. You know, I don't know him very well, but I'm a follower of his online, like many, many thousands, and you just get the sense that he's just a good guy. And uh, I don't know if that's a Canadian thing or, but... Uh, please welcome back to our program, Stuart Rentals. Stuart Rentals. Stuart Rentals. Stuart Rentals. <laughs> if you need, if you need a sky lift, or if you need one of those uh, rakes, yeah, I'd like to. Uh, do you have a Kubota? Do you have a Kubota lift? Yeah. I could. <laughs> I we have it all here at Stuart Rentals. <laughs> Stuart, you know, Stuart. Good morning. Uh, AKA Brittle Star. Good morning. I. Uh, it's great to have you. Thanks for uh, coming in and doing this with oh, us. Oh, thanks for having me. That. I feel like Chris Elliott on Letterman. It's exciting. It is exciting. Uh, speaking of exciting, tell Fred, because I follow you on on Twitter. Yeah, I refuse to call it X, just like I still call it the Sky Dome. Sorry. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> what uh, What have you been doing? Have you, you, were, uh, you did a trip through Eastern Canada? I did a, a thing for a client where we were filming uh, some streeter interviews from, uh, I was in Vancouver, Calgary, Winnipeg, Ottawa. My son was in Montreal doing it en français. And uh, and then I was out uh, in the East Coast. Yeah, Charlottetown and Fredericton and yeah, Halifax. It was fun. It was great. It was yeah. fantastic. What an experience. And what were the streeters? Like, uh, what was the subject? So the subject was, it's not super exciting, I'm afraid. And it does sound, it sounds like a cult, but it's merely cult adjacent. Mm. Uh, it's the <laughs> National great. Payroll Institute. It was for a, a thing they're doing for a National Day of Recognition for payroll professionals. And they thought, <laughs> why not wow. bring an idiot in who doesn't know anything about <laughs> payroll? And uh, maybe he can relate to the everyman, as I always do. Yeah. Wow. But you also did so. I, 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 I. But you did content for Brittle. Oh, yeah. You did Brittle Star content while you were there, yeah. and uh, I, I'm not going to do this justice. But I loved your bit when you were talking about was it Halifax? Is everything's uphill? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, everything is uphill. It was so subtle, you know. And that's what I love about your stuff is that it's it's got some bite to it, but in such a sweet way, and <laughs> just just you going, I continually did, yeah. going uphill. Yeah, I did. Uh, that was the, the Halifax one is fun because at the very end of it, I come to the Halifax Citadel, which is this lovely area at the very top of Halifax, and I make it almost three quarters of the way up, and I just point to it. And I go, "That's the Halifax <laughs> Citadel. You, you can go up there if you want." That's right. <laughs> it was yeah, really good. And and uh, so, and you, well, we've talked about this with you before, but maybe it was just quickly re- restate. Like you were just a regular dude, and you you got into social media or early on, and and now this is kind of the what the Reynolds. I'm sorry, the Rentals family does Reynolds for family. <laughs> well, th- this is part of the the Reynolds family. What you guys do for a living. Yeah, no, it's weird. We've been doing it uh, as of this month for eleven years, which isn't that isn't that crazy? It's like a full time gig, and it supported a family of four, and um, sent kids to university and through university. And it's been yeah, no, it's been it's been we've been really really fortunate. We get to meet lots of cool people and do lots of cool stuff, and spend more time together than we probably ever really wanted to. And it's probably damaged the children somehow. But mm. That's okay, of course. But yeah. it, it it's an indication, you know. As you say, a, a thing about payroll, it might not sound that interesting to us, but it's just an indicator of what what's out there and what can be done and oh, yeah. the, oppor- oh, the opportunities yeah. that have been opened up through this, this this kind of thing. Yeah, I think and it's what's really fun is like people like, you know, uh, I don't want to turn this into a National Payroll Institute commercial, but I mean, they, they really kind of get the idea that they could have fun and get the same, you know achieve the same goals of profile building by saying, Hey, let's do something fun instead of just like, here's what the payroll Institute is about. Um, so it's, it's cool. It's, it's been great. I I mean, I benefit from it and I get to go to lots of great restaurants all across Canada. And and you're you're like, so you're basically your, your business is a, you're an influencer and you do influence influencer marketing, influencer campaigns. Do you have, uh, is there, are you handling all this yourself or have you gotten to the point where, you know, you've got a bit of an agency that represents you. Are you still doing this? I did for the longest time. I did it entirely by myself, mainly because I was terrified that 
uh, someone would take advantage of me because I'm just all looks and no brains. And <laughs> yeah. then I realized, I woke up one morning and I realized, wait a minute, I'm all looks and no brains. I better get someone with brains in here as well. And uh, now I work with an agent I have for the past, I guess, about a year and a half or so, which has been great because now I get to do that thing where people email me and say, would you like to do this? And I like, talk to the agent. Yeah. <laughs> I just pass it over, which is good. Is this exclusively num- <clears throat> numbers driven? Like the reason they would go to you is because of the audience you can provide or how much what's the balance creativity fun and the numbers that you can i think you know it's interesting there's certainly some there's lots and lots of uh air quote influencer marketing that happens because it's it's like a media buy it's like you're going to the biggest newspaper saying what's your distribution Mm -hmm. okay great we'll buy it costs this much money to put an ad in your paper um, there's a little bit of that that happens. It happens less with me, which is great. And I think it's because I've been doing it for so long um, is that people really – like there's a lot of value in the trust I've kind of built with the yeah. audience I have, which is great. And mm-hmm. it's just certain things I'll do where it's like, yeah, I think that makes sense for me. And there's other stuff that will come along and be like, that does not make sense. We turned down a big campaign recently where it was like – this isn't good because people are going to open it up, uh, you know, to my profile and go, "What the hell is this?" Um, and that's not what I want. Yeah, I, I, I right think on. what Fred's asking is a, a good question. In so much that, yeah, you've got this many Twitter followers, or and, and just update me because I, I only follow you on X. So you're on X. Are you on Instagram? Yeah. Are you on TikTok as yeah. well? So there's a number of of, of n- there's an actual number of, of impressions that somebody could buy, but sure. it's also, and I think you touched on this. Uh, you have a, a brand. It's yeah. uh, a feeling. I'm going to play something you did recently, and it's when I see you do something, I have a feeling from it. And if I'm a if I'm a client, I'm looking for that as well as the numbers that go along with it. I think there's that weird sort of uh, ethereal value that you can get. If the brands align, it makes sense, and you feel good about the person, you feel good about the brand. I mean, that's our first brand deal ever was with, with Disney, and we had, our kids were like eight, were 11 and 14, rather, and it was like, that makes sense. <clears throat> that, just, that, that feels good. Um, yeah, so going forward from there, that was the idea, is to continue that. Um, my next-door neighbor, his uh, daughter-in-law, um, years ago just started writing these reviews on good resorts for children yeah she hasn't made a lot of money off it but she hasn't paid for a vacation like in 10 years <laughs> that's amazing. right amazing yeah. that well, type of thing yeah, yeah. i mean uh, you know i don't want I, my, this, this what i could tell you is is too ridiculous but my friend mm-hmm. knows my daughter has a dog mm-hmm. and mm, it, yes it, my daughter's dog has 200 at one point had three hundred thousand instagram followers it's back down to about mm-hmm. 265 but that the influencer marketing campaigns that go along with this dog, this baby dog, yeah. is ridiculous. Like, I'm it's talking crazy. big, mm-hmm. big clients, Target and, yeah. you know, the New York subway system. It's quite something. But uh, I'm trying to grow up my coat so I can get the same kind of deals. <laughs> I, you're, I think I'm, I'm not sure if I told you the story, Stuart, but when the, when, the, when the dog thing first broke, I said, hey, how about a little, uh, you know, I said to my daughter who was in advertising, I said, how about something for, you know, Humble and Fred? She's like, not our, <laughs> she's, this is what she said to me. Not our brand. I'm like, oh, great. ouch. Yeah, great. Ouch. I said, Humble and Fred was your brand when we were paying for the private school. Exactly. It seemed to be okay exactly. there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. God, they forget so fast. They do. They? Um, yeah. So, and we've, we've talked about it before, but I, I want this sort of uh, next thing to segue into what I'm going to play. So there's certain things you're paid to do. And then, of course, there's, there's how much. So I want to do a couple things. How many times a week are you putting out content? Mm-hmm. And you know what what's the process and then we'll talk when we'll play this latest song you've done yeah i mean there's no set schedule and i think there used to be an, an argument that you could do you know create content on a set schedule and there's some benefits to doing that for sure as a content creator however um, I think because of algorithms and stuff, you could do that. And, you know, something that's really, really great just might not hit because of the day, because of whatever else is being released that day. You know, when you're creating content now on social media, you're, you're competing with every single other piece of content out there. News, uh, entertainment, movie releases, music releases. You're competing with everything. Um, so it really is hit and miss. And it's more a case of now where I think if I could do something I think that's funny or I can think that – that's going to be relatable to people or going to have some sort of benefit, then I'll do it. Um, and I think like 90% of the stuff I do, if not more is just original fun content. It's just like, that's, that's what people are following me for is like this stuff that doesn't have any connection to anything really. It's just kind of mm-hmm. bizarre out of left field. Well, what I'm going to play now, Fred, it does have a connection to something, you know, it's this, uh, I th- it's just titled weird. 
<laughs> and, Here we uh, go. Here we go. And uh, by the way, I, I know you get so many comments, but I commented on it. All I wrote was M A W A, Make America Weird Again. I just know. Just, I, just, I just did that for you, just to see Thank if you'd you. get that. But uh, I'm going to play this for you, Fred. Gets and, and the video is great because it's Stuart sort of playing off himself, and it starts with Stuart dressed in a suit, looks like a politician in front of a large crowd of people, and then Stuart the singer. And by the way, the other thing I loved about it is just the subtle way you're sort of dancing yeah. like Trump, just very subtle. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't want to do the full hand motion because that's true. Like someone's going to screen cap that. It's going to turn into that's a gif. Right. I don't need that kind of smoke. Yeah, you know? but it was just the subtle little jerk off motion that we all have come to know by the way he the way he dances. But uh, here's a little taste of uh, Stewart's uh, latest video. There's something kind of off with what they're saying when they talk. Sure, it's racist, reprehensible, and misogynistic too. But the word that mainly springs to mind whenever I think of them is. Weird, they're really kinda weird Weird can be good, but their kind is not The horrible things they say and do Suggest a kind of mental rot But they're just weird, they're really kinda weird Missing from malevolent It doesn't matter their intent It's just 100% to the end Really kinda weird They're just weird, weird, weird they're just weird, weird, weird. They're just weird, weird, weird. They're just weird. <laughs> So, by the way, the other thing I liked, I've never seen anybody do it, but Stuart, with his hands in the video, makes the W with his hand. <laughs> Just I thought I was the yeah. first person ever. I thought, why has no one done the W before? And then a friend of mine said, uh, that's right. the Wu-Tang Clan. That's, I was like, oh, oh, that's right. That's right. I've seen it before. Yeah. But you got to yeah. see this, Fred. Just the way he does it. And then, mm. then the politicians just sort of looking at you while you're doing it with the dancing. It's very like well done. Kind of buy in. Exactly. But, but that's a political. That's kind of where I wanted to take this. Like, sure. So that content, there's, it's obvious what it's about. And it's timely, and it's obviously a phrase that's been bandied about the last couple of weeks. Are you ever nervous about being too political? I mean, yeah. If, if I, I, I try not to do things that are too, like, just out-and-out partisan, um, because there's no benefit for that. I think the politicians are kind of, you know, they, they ebb and flow, and they move with the times and they, as such. Uh, I don't mean progressively, but they just, like, flip and flop in, in whatever mm-hmm. direction is going to make them move forward. Um, whereas there's certain things, like I, I always say, like since 2016, there's been a line where it's been like, mm, I don't think this is just politics anymore. I think this is now right. like about rights and wrongs. And uh, I don't really care who's in charge, but we can't go past this line. Uh, and then I feel like there's an obligation for me to kind of step up and sort of say something because I have a little bit of a platform. You know, that's a great point because I made this point on the weekend to somebody. You look over the past 10, 20 years in Canada and the states, liberals, conservatives, Republicans, Democrats. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, does anything really change? You know what I mean? It's still the same. You know what I mean? The only thing that has changed in the past couple of decades is behavior. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? That, that's the only thing that's changed because, you know, it's all cyclical, uh, cyclical economy. Yeah. You know, it comes, it goes. And it just if you happen to be in power when the economy's good, hey, lucky you. The yeah. only thing that has changed well, is this 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 rotten whatever he is. Well, no, what you know? it, but, but what you said, we were talking about this before you came on. Mm-hmm. It's what it, that's sort of the point I was making. It's mm-hmm. what becomes what's acceptable yeah. now. And Stuart's mm-hmm. a little younger than us, but you're sort of in the same genre of our sure. age group. And, it, it, you know, I've been doing this bit for a while where I say, you know, there used to be a time when a guy got convicted yeah. of a felony or, uh, yeah. said, or mm-hmm. it used to be a time if, you, if a politician said, grab him by the pussy, he wouldn't be able yeah. to run for president. Yeah. But, it's what you, but to what you said, Fred, what's changed mm-hmm. is, is what's acceptable. Yeah. Like this story of JFK and the dead bear. That would be like, <laughs> in, in most political cycles, that would be the weirdest That's thing. Enough. But it's it's not even yeah. close. No, nope. it's not nope. even close because the the president's candidates changed three weeks ago. I think the biggest indicator of how much things have changed, news cycle wise and attention wise, and. Uh 
uh, you know, uh, desensitivity wise is that there was an attempt to assassinate the president just under three weeks ago and nobody cares. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's done. No, you know, I, I, someone died. That's horrible. It, it is know? horrible. And you know what? Yeah, I mean, the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, yeah, we said that. And we got a little bit in trouble. You know, like, oh, yeah. it, like I, I love this quote shortly after that happened. And remember, I, that, that's such a great point. Like that was before the presidential candidates changed. And I love this quote. Live your life in such a way that the entire world isn't ready to throw a party when you get shot. <laughs> <laughs> Good life lesson there. It's like a, it's like a Dickens <laughs> right. story almost. Yeah. yeah just if, if that's your bar for just try and be that good a person so people aren't going Yahoo when you almost get your head blown yeah. off. Yeah. And now the now the question is, is there any coming back from it? Like, is this the new way? Or once that guy is gone, is he going to get back on the rails? And I'm talking about, you know, for Republicans, the GOP, because, you know, they want their party back. We sure. can just hopefully hope that it sort of moves back. Because it's just not good where we're going right now. I think what's happened to me, to me anyway, I sort of feel that uh, there was a whole bunch of gentlemen's agreements. There's a whole bunch of handshake agreements. There's a whole bunch of unwritten sort of rules and laws and code of behavior. And I think you had people in, you know, like Trump coming along in 2016 who were like, they will. I mean, that's not against the law. OK, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever I can. And I'm going to go walk right up to that line and then eventually beyond it. But I mean, it's the same. It's happening here in Canada as well as the same idea where it's like there's there's just codes of conduct and there's just like, you know, just generally good behavior that has been like, well, that doesn't benefit me. So why would I do it? I think we're going to have to to, get, to go back from that. I'm not sure we're going to be able to go back. from No. That. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the thing, yeah. again, I, I like the idea that we're talking about, a, you know, what what is and what isn't acceptable behavior. It's the, the other thing, too. Like, listen, for years, the cartoons have always depicted politicians as, you know, speaking out of both sides of their mouth. But sure. when you out and out lie in a world where anybody can fact check you, yeah. that's mm-hmm. the part that I find sort of odd that, like I always say to Fred, none any of Trump's followers have Google. They, yeah. they, can they not just but, Google what he's saying? <clears throat> And, and, and you know, the weird thing. Yeah, it's very weird. And that's why I love that word. I just love that. So simple. Yeah. And that was the guy who from Minnesota who may be named. Yeah. Tim Walls. Vice president. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah. It's just they're. They're just so weird that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you have facts on Trump. He's yeah. been to court. He's been convicted. He's been fined for stealing from his charity. The other side, what they they want to go deep state. They have no, they have nothing of substance. Yeah. As I said to a guy on the weekend, I said, "Well, what's what's Biden been convicted of? What's Kamala? Yeah. been convicted yeah. of? Yeah. And then they go to it goes to the deep state. They're doing things behind the scenes that are going to destroy us all. Oh my god! Yeah, but the irony oh, is, Trump's you know, doing things in front of the scenes, and they don't give a yeah. shit. But yeah. that's the point, right? They don't have an argument. It's like I can give you, I, like I can just call it up right now. Find, convicted, bang, bang, bang. But I think that's one of the things about the the whole weird thing, which is fascinating, is that you've got this grade four level term that people are lobbing at, at the other side now. Um, but at the same time, there's been a grade four level of dialogue that of information that's being fed out from the, you know, the mm-hmm. Trumps and the yeah. other sort of not ne'er do wells. And, uh, th- that makes it easy to sort of, re- like, you can't rationalize. You can't go, listen, here's why you're wrong. I've got five reasons and I've got this spreadsheet. That's never going to get attention. You, you know, you can say you're weird. This is weird. We've had some uh, discussions. My, actually, my older brother is on his way here from Calgary to visit. Uh, he's a psychologist and he's a pretty smart guy. He always, you know, way smarter than me. And we had had him on the show to talk about about because what, what made me think of it was Fred saying, well, can can you come back from it? The problem with people that participate in politics now at the mm-hmm. level we're talking about, the cult like level, the blind faith level is there isn't a fact that you, get, you could give them that would uh, they, that they would buy into because they'd have to walk back some of their beliefs oh, yeah. and their beliefs have become who they are. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, Stuart, I understand the position you're in, too. When you're in the business that you are, you got to watch it. You can't get too partisan sure. because I think as we've all found out, and again, I did over the weekend, you don't know what's going on the head, on in the head of the people sure. you're talking to. You don't, yeah. and you can't, <clears throat> you're in a position, it's the entertainment industry per se. Yeah. You can't alienate half your audience. No, you don't want to do that. 
Mm-hmm. At the same time, it's like you know you don't have to you, you don't have to go back to the cabaret in Casablanca and make sure you're entertaining both sides of the cafe. <laughs> right, you know right. what I mean? It's like yeah. it's okay if you so, piss off half it's the all right. cafe. Nazis? Are you are you comfortable Nazis? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't want to offend right. any Nazis. That's in the room. right. Um, yeah. Yeah, but, you don't but, worry about before that. we wrap up, the, you know, again, we're talking about how fast things happen. The news cycle: the guy got shot, presidents were replaced. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been off uh, since last uh, weekend. You know, we took the weekend, and since we were off uh the presidential candidate was uh, is is he's on stage talking about how the woman used to be indian and now she turned black and that's not enough to disqualify him yeah it's it's, that's that's what's most different in this in this time that we're living in where it doesn't seem like there is anything he could do like he said i could Mm. shoot somebody on fifth avenue i'd still wouldn't lose a follower or even you know the vance stuff (laughs) Like, you know, they're apologizing. They're finding excuses. It was just a quip. I know what a quip is. That was not a quip. And then I see this big story yesterday in Fox. You know, his wife, Vance's wife, explains what he really meant. Well, it doesn't explain anything other than calling it a quip. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a quip. And I think it's so, so as ridiculous as that was, they're just finding excuses for it. They're, they're normalizing it. It's very much a uh, taking. It's weaponizing, giving someone the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, it's like say I can say one thing, yeah, and if you don't like her, yeah. if I get in trouble, I can walk back. Well, what I really, meant, what my intent was, was this. Yes, yeah. no, no. You said mm-hmm. what you said. So let's uh, as before we go, everyone should go to brittlestar dot com for uh, all your brittle star needs. If you're looking to rent a compressor or a generator, mm-hmm. go to Stewart mm-hmm. Rentals. Uh, that's. that's- uh, <laughs> Fantastic. I'm, I'm registering that name right away. <laughs> Fan, mm-hmm. Fantastic. What's uh, so? It's now uh, Tuesday. We're recording this program and um, streaming live on Facebook. But uh, wh- wh- ha- have you already got stuff in the can? Because that that weird video that I liked and played, yeah, that just came out a couple of days ago. So what what is yeah. on tap for this week? Or have you already figured it out? Or is it done? No, it's not done. I mean, there's some standing stuff that we do that sort of happens every week that's production-wise that, that needs to happen when it happens. Uh, but apart from that, like I'm, I was thinking this morning when I was having my coffee, I was like, okay, what can I go after today? And I kind of get into this energy where it's like, you know, I, I want to make fun of this. I want to I want to make – there's there's so much to make fun of. And there's also so much, you know, <laughs> so many things to be incredulous at. It's right. like, well, let's let's make fun of that. So I, I, hopefully I think I'll probably find something to make fun of. But it's just hit and miss, just whatever the day allows me to do. Well, well, listen, man, we always appreciate you being here. Thanks for uh, sure, stepping racist, up and uh, yeah, all course, the best. Here, uh, fa- I'll just as we leave, uh, this is a little more of uh, Stuart's song, Weird. Thank you, my friend. Brittlestar.com. Take and care, guys. Thank you. Stuart Rentals. Okay, okay, buddy. Take it easy. All right, man. Take care. The horrible things they say and do suggest a kind of mental rot, but they're just weird. Hey, you want to hear something weird? Weird. Yes. On, uh, I think it was Friday. On Friday, I got a message on my phone from a number I didn't uh, recognize. I just thought it was telemarketer or something. It was a 202 area code, which I later came to find that it was the uh, Was- from Washington, D.C. And it was a uh, reporter from the Washington Post trying to get a hold of my ex-wife. Oh, right. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I know, I, so I called him back. I'm like, he just left me a message. I call him back and he's like, I said, first of all, how'd you get my number? I guess there's a way to look up people's numbers where there are numbers in their universe, like adjacent numbers somehow sure. in some, some form somewhere. She's got me listed as a, as a number to call. I don't know. That part kind of freaked me out a bit. But I talked to the guy and I said, listen, she's not interested. And for you people who don't know, Randy uh, went to, ex wife Randy went to uh, school in Montreal for a year with Kamala Harris. Randy and her friend uh, Cheryl, not to be confused with Shari, but Cheryl mm-hmm. and, and Kamala and uh, Randy went to school for a year. I think grade, so in, you know when they have grade 13 here, 
Mm -hmm. In Montreal, you go to grade 11 in high school, and grades 12 and 13, you go to something called CGEP. It's like a college Mm -hmm. prep kind of environment, and it's more like college than high school. So I guess you went with Kamala for a year. So... And I thought for some, because Randy didn't want to come on the show, by the way. I, I, was, I talked about it last Oh, I week. thought she was going to. No. Right. She has Okay. N- and and I, for the, I won't even tell you the reasons because they're so ridiculous, but that's her reasons and that's fine. But you know what? You don't tell me. I can imagine what they are and I understand. You know, you know what? I'm going to tell you after the show and uh, we'll have a little game of I bet you can't guess what the reasons are. Okay. But, okay. Because if you if I know her, listen, I know her a little better than you, and even I couldn't have guessed this was the reason. <laughs> Fuck. When I tell you, you're going to go, really? Because here's the oh, thing. Okay. You and I like to overthink, but this is overthinking at a, mo- <laughs> at a molecular level. So mm-hmm. anyway, the, I, I was worried because I thought, because Randy first, was she's been getting several calls from reporters to, to talk about Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought, well, maybe somebody heard it on our show because she said one of her friend's husbands who listens to us heard us talking about it. But it turned out there was a story. The school that Randy went to put out a little story in Montreal saying with us with a class picture of Kamala Harris. And Randy is quoted in that story from years ago that we, oh. you know, that we used to hang out something or other. And I saw the story because I because the reporter from The Washington Post that I spoke to sent me a clip of that story. So that's where it came from. I was happy that, you know, I wasn't part of the, you know, making trouble for my ex-wife. But, and so I, I talked to this guy and I just for a little while said, so, you know, what's the angle? Well, he says, well, the angle is that she went to school in Canada and we just want to see, you know, what, what life was like for a young Kamala Harris. I'm like, cool. Did she ever get high? How many boyfriends did she have? Yeah, I mean, there's a thing. You know, like the, mm-hmm. again, the conservatives the right wing mm-hmm. conservative media the way they're trying to portray it's almost like you can see you and I have been part of some of this process in our careers where people uh, brainstorm or they even you know test drive uh, slogans or they go out to you know focus groups you know when we've changed slogans at radio stations they'll often focus test those before they go to the market with them but what we're seeing with the right wing media is in real time them sort of test marketing ways to slag Kamala Harris. You know, Trump's whole thing about, you know, she's not really black, uh, et cetera, you know, all that stuff. Here's this <laughs> fucking pimple headed nitwit, Jesse Waters. Here's here's his latest take on why she can't be president. Just an average woman, Kennedy. She's she's just an average kind of mediocre person who avoids fixing things because she doesn't want any attention that's negative. She doesn't try that hard. And then when she does not try, she gets in trouble for not trying. And then she yells at everybody else. She likes wine. She likes food. She <laughs> likes to dance. She's just like your typical girl's girl that Sounds very basic. talks yeah. behind everybody's back and then says nice things to your face. So, so far, this is just this is him talking about a politician. That for, I mean, this, this just shows you what a fucking idiot. But but the next nine seconds is going to blow your head off. Listen to what he I says. You know, she's just not at the level of what you'd think would be a president. Mm. She's just too mediocre to be president. How about that? <laughs> she's, she's just not at the level. Mm. She's mm-hmm. just too mediocre to be president. And, you know, of course, <laughs> I, of course, folks, you know what we're thinking. Mm. The mm-hmm. other guy that's presidential. Mm hmm. Anyway, I, I, uh, I like, let's, let's move on. I'm just giving <laughs> just all the stuff he just that's said. That's funny. And what's strange is he's on a panel with a bunch of other women and they just not, not the, uh, liberal lady. She's, she thinks he's a fucking asshole, but the other ones they're just nodding. Yeah. She's just, you know, attorney general, Senator, she's too mediocre. She likes food. Oh, well, see, this is the complexity of it all. He's doing that for numbers and ratings and to make millions of dollars. It's not helping his country. It doesn't make sense. All he's doing is feeding the simpletons who watch that network. And I guess it's business. But say he's your buddy and he has been for the past couple of decades or past decade or whatever. And then all of a sudden he, he becomes that because apparently he has. He worked for MSNBC and... How do you deal with that? I don't know. 
You know what I mean? Honestly. And again, it's back, back to what you brought up an hour ago that, you know, you could sit around and talk about issues and things were fine. You differed. But when you have somebody that buys in like that, <laughs> yeah. how do you, de- if, you, if, you know, he's your brother, he's your cousin, he's your whatever, how do you, how do you deal with that? And we've talked a little bit about how, you know, these programs work. Uh, You know, they do a show every day at five. He has a show every night at seven. So at some point in the morning, mid-afternoon, people are sitting around a room brainstorming ideas. And and there's people in that room that know all of this is just batshit crazy. Yes. And and yes. when maybe Jesse says, oh, I've got something, maybe I'll talk about just how mediocre she is. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. Mm-hmm. And, and and you've seen from this conversation or conversations you had this weekend, not with the gay guy, with the Trump right. guy. Yeah. Um, you've seen that they just buy into all this stuff because that's where they're getting their perspective from and nowhere else. Mm-hmm. And that's the key. No, and nowhere else. And it's those talking points. And, and when you sit there, why it's good news for the Democrats and her and whoever a VP is. That's all they got. That's all you have. Yeah. So that's your thing today. I'm going to talk about how mediocre she is as a person. Yeah. That's all I got on her. And, like and, that's that's and, pretty good. <laughs> and you want to talk about alienating half of your audience because even the were the Republicans supporting women that see that. Is that do you really is there? They got to some of them have to say what she likes food. She likes to dance. She talks behind everybody's back and says nice things to your face. What are you fucking in high school? Like and then, of course, yeah. now their big thing is, well, you know, it's been she was got the nomination or mm-hmm. Biden changed 14 days ago and she's not given an interview yet. Mm-hmm. OK, what is she hiding? Sort of been busy. Yeah, she's kind of been busy, you know. Anyway, so that's all of that for today. Let's do a little work for the, because uh, we've got uh, Nick coming up with the condo report. Let's do a little bit of work for the people that uh, support this program that works so closely with Humble and Fred Industries. Uh, 15 minutes from now, a big basketball game at the Olympics. Canada plays France in a quarterfinal. Everyone excited over that. Canada, the favorite, minus 400 on that one, ladies and gentlemen, according to Bodog. Uh, in fact, I'll put it on right when the show uh, is over, because I find that somewhat exciting. Uh, whether you're a sports better, a horse racing fan, a poker, casino player, Bodog, your number one source of online gambling entertainment. From their industry-leading odds, world-class sports book to their fully loaded casino and race book, they've been providing Canadian players with an unparalleled gaming experience since 1994. That's your Bodog. Uh, I've written down something I want you to remind me because I'm going to talk about Boron here. Uh, but after, I want to say that we have another, I won't say what it is, but we have another Humble and Fred listener event announcement coming up. Uh, first, the latest news at Boron1.com. They're advancing the licensing prog- process for their project. And as we've been saying all along, have the Sherpa, have your Sherpa, have somebody look at this stock. Uh, again, Freddie and I make no claims about what may or may not happen, but... You know, when a junior mining company gets to this point in development where they're doing the licensing, etc., it's a pretty good place to start. It's a penny stock right now. And who knows where it could go. You could find out for yourself at boron1.com. That's boron1.com. Uh, all we're going to say now uh, is everything is about tomorrow night. Stonehooker. On the lakeshore in Mississauga from 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock. I've uh, expanded my time. I will be there from about uh, 6.45 now till probably 8.40, 8.42, 3 or 4. So, you know, lots of Humble Howard and Fred Patterson time. Uh, but then we're taking next week off. We're back on the 19th of August. And when we return, we will be going full bore for another Humble and Fred listener event to sort of end the summer with. It's going to be a end of summer thing. And uh, it's going to be, uh, we're going to record the podcast at a time that we've never done before, which is in the evening. So it'll be a chance for you to come and watch us record and to be festive and to celebrate the end of summer. And uh, that's all we can tell you. I'll give you a hint. 
It's going to be very similar to an event we've done uh, in the not-so-distant past. Like around Christmas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm, yes. Yeah. Uh, we're very excited about it. We've been wanting to do it for a while, and it's going to be uh, a really a lot of fun for everybody. And uh, listen, there's no if you want to come to tomorrow night and to the next one, that's fine. But uh, there is going to be a next one, and it's going to be a, a fun time to actually... Re- See, tomorrow night, we're just going to be hanging around, drinking beer, and eating pizza. <laughs> but uh, on, the, uh, on the next one, we're going to actually be recording the podcast with guests and performances, and uh, it'll be quite something. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Something to look forward to. You know, you get past August into September, everybody, you know, a little, little bit of seasonal depression, I guess sets in it's like ah the winter's coming well we will lift your spirits <laughs> that's right that's we, we will lift we are the spirit lifters oh yeah oh that's what mm-hmm. people say oh i like that show the spirit lifters <laughs> um just a quick uh, sad note uh sad happy whatever but uh our friend uh, anthony petrucci palma pasta a friend of ours and a client of ours we've been associated for years his uh, father Mar- Marcilio Petrucci, the uh, the patron of the pa- of the mm-hmm. pa- Palma Pasta thing, the whole enterprise has uh, passed away, and I say it's, it's sad, but we, the man lived; he was nearly a hundred years old. And I spoke to Anthony yesterday, and what a life! What a life this man, his father uh, Marcilio, has had, and a celebration to be had uh, tomorrow. So, I just just a quick note for Palma Pasta people like us. Uh, they're actually closing the Palma Pasta locations tomorrow in honor of his father, and they're going to have a celebration and a funeral. And uh, we just wanted to pass our our best wishes. Very sweet. And his dad, I think, was active in the company. Like, oh, absolutely. Until recently, would always come in and just you know see how things were going. Fred, man, his father. His father was. I I just didn't know this story. I was talking to Anthony about. Did it you yesterday. ever meet the man? I never did. Um, you know, I can't say if I did, but I, here's the thing. Okay. I've been going to Palma Pasta. Before Anthony was a client of ours, we were, when I lived in Oakville, we used to, ex-wife Randy, that was part of our yes. routine, Palma Pasta. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. didn't know this, but his father, Marsilio, and his mother, Palma, that's her name, started, oh. started the business when I think she was 56 or 7, and he was in his mm-hmm. early 60s. That was wow. their second lives. Mm. They, they put all their money into this business you know homemade you know beautiful italian ingredients and and built the business up over the last 35 years or so of his life so uh, quite a story quite a man and uh we just want just wanted to, to mention that because anthony's such a great guy and, and they've been so good to us yep he's a sweetheart he definitely is and again as you say a bittersweet thing you know it's sad to lose your dad but what a great life Great so, long life. Yeah, exactly. And uh, again, if you're mm-hmm. a Palma Pasta patron, Palma Pasta people, uh, closed on uh, Wednesday, August 7th. All right, let's uh, move on. Here's uh, on to some other information that's very, very uh, valuable. Uh, let's, uh, let's get right, right to it. Here we go. It's the, uh, another episode of the uh, Condo Report. The Condo Report. There he is representing. I got my, He's got his got merch. My arm on. Where do we get that? Where do we get that cool uh, building Toronto skyline hat? When's your When's your beer event? Uh, it's tomorrow night, man. Seven to nine, Stoneherker Brewery on the uh, Lakeshore. Sure. You gonna come and hang? Just come hang. You gonna come and hang? You're Wednesday? Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow night, man. Oh. August seventh. Oh. It's Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> Time flies. So, yeah, where, where is it again? 866 Lakeshore Avenue East, Stonehooker Brewery. Oh, we'd love to see you there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, come have your picture. Come have your picture taken with Nick. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to steal the show. Are oh, you? I bet you oh, will. I, 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 you know what? I, I have no doubt you will. I'd be happy to. We, you know what? When a celebrity like you <laughs> shows up, we'd be happy to step aside. People yes, don't sir. Know, people don't know I'm a celebrity yet. Yeah, more you can hand well. out free condos. <laughs> <laughs> condoms? The, oh, uh, baby. Oh, baby. Nick Itis is here, building Toronto Skyline, the condo report. 
And let's get uh, to it, guys. Before let's get to it, man. Gets out of control. Shit's hit. You know what? All I know is this: you can find out more about what Nick's up to at FusionCorp.ca, and he's he's written a book called Building Toronto Skyline, which now he's rocking this cool hat that says that on top of it. What is uh, what's happening, my friend? All right. Well, last time we talked about interest rates, right? And they were a couple of days away from an, an interest rate cut. And uh, there's a lot of speculation that this would happen. And it did. And uh, the interest rate was cut by 25 basis points. And it looks like we're going to we're headed for more rate cuts. And that's uh, a lot of good news for Canadians. However, there's a lot of volatility in the market. And that's when people get scared. You saw what happened in the uh, stock market. So in the U.S., unemployment uh, jumped up, and this uh, created a major sell-off in the stock market. People get nervous when they see headlines like this. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's likely going to be a good thing uh, in the long term because I think the feds will cut rates too in the U.S. so that we can complement the, the, both uh, banks can uh, mm-hmm. central banks can 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 move towards rate cuts uh, yeah. the same time they're uh, caught between a rock and a hard place down there because they're in a situation boy if we cut interest rates it might look like like we're being like partisan or um, it could be political right um, for sure what are they get, what are they gonna do it's backfired on them so now next month or whatever they may have to reduce them and then they will be accused of helping the anyway it's it's quite the uh, show going on down mm-hmm. there yeah it is crazy mm-hmm. That's, thank mm-hmm. you thank God you guys are in Mexico <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> they're safe and sound sure well it's certainly safer <laughs> it's certainly safer than the US. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it is. You, so you see a silver, as you often do, because uh, you're just mm-hmm. that kind of man. You see a silver lining in all of this, and uh, yeah, yes. I, I mean, you can't help but not see things that uh, generally will be improving, but it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, the fall is a great time to see when mm-hmm. where we really truly stand because probably you're going to have more new condos starting selling in the fall so after labor day weekend that's basically it's kind of a few times that people sell it's uh you know it's spring it's uh sometimes uh february is a time to launch and then there's also uh you know your spring but rarely do you launch a project in the summer because people are uh, vacationing and yeah. a lot of stuff. Oh, they're, yeah. preoccupied, they're preoccupied. Nick. They're, they're preoccupied. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, absolutely. And of course, yeah. we can't we can't have you on here without mentioning sixty on Broadway. That's the number sixty on Broadway dot com. That's in uh, the beautiful town of Orangeville. Uh, Nick's really. It's not just about your own projects. You have a, a see all things. But um, where are we at with that project? Or do you have? Is there an update on that? So we are launching in the fall. That's uh, ah very good. Yeah, so that's going to happen now. So usually you'll have like about, about five, a few stages in the condo sales process. So you'll have uh, friends and family come initially. Then you'll have like the broker's launch where you bring a bunch of agents to sell your product. And then you'll have your VIP or pre-registration launch. And then the, the official public opening of the sales office. So that's, uh, you know, if you're a fam- friends and family, you get in early, you pick the best unit that you can get. Wow. And, uh, yeah, that's when all the connections. So start. is that happening? Yeah, like- I didn't know it worked that way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we had no does. idea. If you walk into the sales office afterwards, you you didn't get the best deal. <laughs> so you're saying do that. Do we qualify? Do we qual- yeah, where do we stand on the uh, friends and are we yeah. friends and family? Mm-hmm. Or is there a special humble and Fred yeah. section? We after the public. <laughs> well, we'll bring some beer and we'll get in. Right on, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Case of humble and Fred beer, I get the best. You know, we I have get the best we, units. Listen, I'll get exactly. You guys, I'll get you guys. I'll get you guys in. All okay, right, man. Okay. Because you know, Sounds listen, good. Uh, with the kind of yeah, money, with, with the kind of money we generate here, we're looking for an investment. <laughs> well, it's good. It's great to invest in Orangeville. I think it's going to be a great condo. Oh, yeah. So I just wanted to say that there's many, like back to the market and where we're at, there's many periods in, uh, in, in my book, there's many references to periods in history that affect the housing market. 
And I think I, you know, in the book I cite a couple of examples uh, from early uh, European immigration uh, to various changes in the economy that impact supply and demand. Mm-hmm. I think we're really in a new chapter, and it all started with the pandemic. We had started with massive and you know supply chain uh, shortages, and then interest rates uh, going up. Or sorry, inflation going up, uh, and then that you know spurred uh, interest rates to rise. And mm-hmm. uh, now we hope we are at the end of that chapter, right. and we're, we'll be in a new, more uh, forgiving period or more prosperous period in the condo market. So we're sounds waiting. Great, we're all waiting for that. Mm-hmm. No, that's sounds right. good. Well, this is why we have you on because you have the insight, mm-hmm. and you have the acumen. You have a great personality. You've written a book. You're like a sought after mm-hmm. author, guest, or raconteur. And you know what? We're just lucky. We're just goddamn lucky to have you part of our crew. Well, I'm Brink. really it's a pleasure to be here as always. And uh, even though you guys are a little bit uh, boring sometimes, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what what part what part of our program is the boringest for you? This part? <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. No, I think it's great. Do, uh, do, well, we'll do, say, do, we'll do, do, do you mean this segment is when we're boring, or do you mean during the actual no, this show? This is the most exciting part. No, of, of course. Yeah, I should be yeah. like a, I should be a permanent guest. You know? Dude, you listen. You for the yes. right amount of money, uh, Nikki, you can co-host <laughs> this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Just if you come tomorrow night, bring a good pen because you'll be signing autographs. All oh night. my God! I know, yes, I know you will. Okay. Yeah, Pictures. exactly. Wear a nice suit. But I can so tell you, you listen. Should, you, guys, you guys should plug your beer thing again because I, I got to get this address now. What is that address again? It's uh, eight six eight sixty six <laughs> Lakeshore Avenue East. Right. Uh, Lakeshore uh, Avenue funny. East. Yeah, in uh, Mississauga, tucked just inside Mississauga. Yeah, oh, it's really it. easy to get. I love it's it. easy to get there. Mississauga is close to me, so. Where do, where, right are on, you, where is your home? Well, I'm not going to tell you. What city do you live in? I live in Toronto slash Brampton. Okay. Dude, oh, I just got news for you. You, you could give out your exact a- address and no one's coming to bother you. I promise. Mm-hmm. Um, bring your Lamborghini, too. Oh, I want to see it. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, listen, okay. we got to go. Uh, Nick, that was too great. Okay, gentlemen. Nick, okay, buddy. Nick, take it easy. Nick, I guess, uh, everybody. At, I'll, uh, see you I'll see you guys tomorrow. I can't, can't wait. That. Right on. FusionCorp.ca right. and author of Building Toronto's uh, Skyline and the least boring thing on our program, ladies and gentlemen. Ciao, so, guys. All right, nigga. <laughs> you guys are in Mexico. That just struck me funny. No, I know. It was great. <laughs> My favorite part is when he said the rest of our show is boring. Um, hey, everybody, Freddie. What got- we'll put up with for money, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when he was going through all the uh, different stages of friends and family and then so and so on, and they said, but I, yeah. what, I, did you not think he said Asians? Yes, I did. I did. Just- <laughs> yeah. I thought, what? But he, he said agents. I know, he yes. did. <laughs> he said, that's when the agents come in. I was like, wow. Uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, do you have uh, some more stuff for us? Because I, uh, I'm all yes. done. Tim Nibblet is a portfolio manager. Raymond James, a member of the Canadian uh, Investors Protection uh, Fund. Um, yeah, you know, yesterday was a holiday in um, Canada, in Toronto, Ontario, whatever. So the TSX wasn't open. So we really didn't see get to see the impact of uh, the big crash in the United States yesterday. <clears throat> Crash the wrong word. The big downturn, about a thousand points. It was close to 500 on the TSX on Friday. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this morning. And then I'm sure by Wednesday, oh, which is tomorrow actually, we'll get a, an analysis uh, from uh, Sherpa Side on uh, what happened, what to expect, and what it means to your portfolio. And if you have a portfolio, remember. Uh, Tim or Jay will have a look at it, give you an honest assessment of where you're at. Uh, are you, uh, you know, performing the way it should or not? And then you can decide whether you want to come over to the Sherpa side. No strings attached, no pressure, just an offer by the Retirement Sherpa, retirementsherpa.ca. Vice President Kamala Harris has made a decision for her running mate. With four people close to the process saying Governor Tim Walls of Minnesota is her choice, according to 
my uh, girlfriend, Caitlin Collins. I think that's a pretty good choice. You know, he... He looks like the he looks like somebody's dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he's you know what he, he's witty, he's funny, he's sharp. And listen, that's part of the show nowadays. Yeah. I can imagine him on a stage with that sawed off little creep J D debating. No, he would wipe the floor with him. And the other thing about him is that he's the strategically, he's the governor of a uh state that they're gonna have to win, Minnesota. He's super popular in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you on a personal note, I never thought, I thought Josh Shapiro was also a a great and possibly will run for president one day. But uh, I I heard enough of this talk that, uh, you know, a woman, a black woman or a, a mixed race woman running at the top of the ticket, there may have, it might have been too much for them to have a man of the Jewish faith as the uh, vice president. And remember there's a whole faction that sort of upset traditional Democrats upset with the Biden administration over, you know, Gaza. Yep. And, and Minnesota has a huge population of people that have that interest. Mm-hmm. So that's strategic. And again, Shapiro, you know, being a Jewish man would is is the country ready for that? It's ridiculous you it is. to say that. A woman and a Jew. Oh, are we ready for that? Jesus. Or a woman what, and a what woman. What year is it? Well, yeah. I, I'll what tell you what year it is. <laughs> In the entire history of that country, they've only had two now non-regular uh-huh. Protestant, <laughs> whatever, uh, religious yes. Presidents Kennedy, right. and then sixty-five years later, or sixty years later, mm-hmm. Biden. The only two Catholics. Right. So, you know, sometimes you have to hold your nose, but you got to be strategic because that's the nature. That's the culture. That's the mentality of that country. You know, below average. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dan Duran is uh, back. I got some rain here in the city of Toronto. How about you? Is it starting to it seems overcast, but uh, where are you at over there? We're not uh, we're not sitting in rain right now. We no. could get a little bit, I suppose, but All there's right. a system that's coming through. There's nothing yeah, to they're... do with Debbie, which is the other system. Yeah. No, the um, mm-hmm. there's definitely some weather on the way. I'm just looking at uh, my brother's flight. You know, departed. Okay, he's fine. Uh, there's definitely in the middle, of, but but for the next few days, uh, starting basically tomorrow through the weekend, it looks really really nice here in the city, and we're going to start to maybe lose some of the humidity. Which, uh, you know, is part of uh, sort of late August into September, early October around here in the uh, GTA is some of the nicest weather that we get. If it rains, Dan won't mind. He spends a lot of time in his trailer now. Yeah, you, is- you, were, you were mentioning that. What is that all about? He does. I don't know. And it's great. There's nothing wrong with it. But the irony is when Dan had the hobo trailer, as you called it, mm-hmm. and I had this facility, sometimes I got the impression he was annoyed that I was inside. He wanted me to be outside with him or whatever. And there was a little bit of an annoyance. What he didn't appreciate is when you have a nice environment up here, you don't mind being inside. High ceilings, nice big television yeah. set, the co- all the comforts of home. And sometimes you just want to be inside. Well, now he's living that. So, like, Dan, it's unbelievable. how do you answer these charges? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, he's not wrong. It's nice to be inside the trailer. And, you, you know, it's a uh, yeah, yeah, here's the thing. There's a nice big television set in there now, right? Mm-hmm. There was a time, I don't remember this, Howard, but when I, uh, there was a period about six or seven years I did not have a television in my life on purpose because I, you know, like I just didn't want to be addicted and distracted by the television. Yeah, so I because, have because you have that's so much, absolutely, and you, you were very busy with all your other side projects. Yes, mm-hmm. and now uh, I have a big, huge, you know, by default, buying this, it came with this huge television. It's like 75 so. inches, the biggest TV I've ever seen. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's huge. It's lovely. Yeah. And I just sit down on a couch, and then all of a sudden, you know, you can't walk by it, and but, I'm sitting down. And but, Dan, I'll tell you, there's a, but, but in your trailer, and I get it, you know, like, you mm-hmm. can you can sit there on that couch, and you've got all the comforts, and you've got your TV set up, yeah. and then just out the door, you have the lake view. And mm-hmm. so you get a little bit of everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can see the lake while I'm watching the TV. I can go. You know, from Fred, one I don't know why letter. you're being so hard on Dan. I mean, <laughs> you said hard <laughs> on, <laughs> but um, I don't know why you're being so flaccid with Dan. Uh, because no, I'm not. He's I'm changing. Just, it's an Our op- Daniel is growing up. 
it's an observation. Mm, okay. But I remember when he had the old trailer, he'd come over here, you know, b- his head bobbing up and down, sort of seeing where I was. And in fact, a couple of times he even said, oh, you're watching TV. Oh, you're yeah, still no, on I've, the side. I've done that, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I've, and, I've become victim of my own. Oh, exactly. Uh, no, yes. Yeah, there's yeah, a, well, you so. should see. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm well aware of the judginess of Dan Duran. Like when I'm here, <laughs> when I'm here and cooking for him and I put something in the wrong recycling department, he gets very yeah. judgy. No. Um, all right, Dan. Well, you know what, uh, Howard? Yes, Fred. One more thing as far as cooking and Dan Duran. Yes. Last week he made me collard greens. Oh, yeah. Mm. So good. You'd love it. You'd love them. What oh, are collard? Have you ever had them? What are collard greens? Tell them, so, Dan. It's a lot like kale. Yeah. So it has a, a strong, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it, a, a vein? You tell you, you, so you. you got a holds the leaf. To you the got plant. a strong vein, <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm. Anyway, so you you either cut that off and throw it away, or you right. you pre cook it before you cook the. Uh, yeah, the uh, I got the same thing with kale. You know, to keep the the tough parts down, you 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 know cook them. You got to soften it up a little bit, sure. Yeah, and you put a little garlic in there. Oh, nice. Um, and then some onions along with that, and then you know pick your spices, and you know maybe a little balsamic, and then you've got a, a beautiful dish. So it's fantastic. A lot fantastic, fantastic! You've got to get him to prepare you some color. Well, I can't wait till you, until I come up or you come here. Yeah. I'm uh, my brother, as I mentioned. David's on the way to spend a few days golfing with me here, and and you know I I don't know about you guys, but you know I'm. Whenever I try something and I like to cook it, I like keep I keep doing it over and over again. So a couple weeks ago, Charlie was here, and I got these marinated Korean short ribs. I made them for Charlie and I, and mm-hmm. they were great. Then I made them mm-hmm. for Spencer when she came. That's time number two. That was a couple weeks, a week ago. Then Charlie was here last week, and I said, I'll make you lunch. He goes, how about some Korean short ribs? I'm like, done. So now <laughs> David is coming here today, and Charlie's going to be here in the in the house uh, working, and then have dinner with her uncle and I. And I said to her this morning, "How about some more Koreans?" This <laughs> is the fourth time, fourth time in I'd say fourteen days that I'll be grilling marinated Korean barbecued short ribs or whatever. They're so wow. fucking good. So it's because what are your standards then, Dan? When your you're go-tos. here, I promise you this: when you're here next time, I'll make the Korean short ribs. You make the collard greens. The collard greens, and then I'll and then right. I'll make you turn your back when I throw shit in the recycling. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, you're going to turn into Kim Jong Un. Yeah, you know, you Kim, keep eating those. No, things. I'm Kim Ju Un. <laughs> I actually uh, made dinner here on uh, Saturday night. Mm-hmm. I made a little barbecued uh, poached salmon. I did uh, asparagus. I made a beautiful salad. Yeah, it's quite something. That sounds that sounds great. It's very nice. You're right on top of just, it, just for yourself. No, I was fantastic. <laughs> You're yeah. on top of it. Yeah, I got oh, it. Oh yeah, I got I got it. I was on top of it. You were mm-hmm. on top of it. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know Helping what's going on. Too, yeah. mm-hmm. You know what's what going on. Well, I, yeah. why, don't we, why don't we just stick with I was right on top of it. You were on top of it. <laughs> okay, yeah. here we go. And speaking of on top of things, how about our very own Anchorman? Now, here's to a fella named Dan Duran, a hell of a guy with a hella big wang, the quintessential Anchorman. His voice is nice and low. Huh. Dan Duran, the Anchorman comes and as for credentials, he has none. Can't tell a headline from his bum, but his voice is nice and low. Dan Duran, the anchorman's here He's prone to falling off his chair But he's got a big wang So he don't care And his voice is nice and low My voice is nice and low And now live from Lakeside With news and views Here's a movie anchorman And collard green chef Daniel J. Gebert Duran Okay, what's going on in the news? Google has been declared a monopolist. Hurricane Debbie is dumping too much rain on the U.S. South, but, you know, it's not nothing to do with climate change, of course. And the bear thing explained. So while RFK Jr. was hanging out in uh, Roseanne's kitchen, he admitted the uh, the dead bear in Central Park mystery was him. And he decided to release this uh, to counter a bad bear story that the New Yorker was working on. He probably should have left it to the New Yorker. And here we go. So he was out falconing one day, <laughs> as as one does. Yes. 
And uh, he saw a car kill a bear cub, and he thought it would be great to skin it and eat the bear meat. Um, And he had little time to do it in the field, so he put it in his car. And he knew roadkill was legal in New York State for some reason, so uh, he had to get a tag for it. Anyway, he went and got back to town, too late to do the bear. uh, And he had an expensive restaurant date to go to, so he went to that. That went too long, too. And he had a flight to catch, and he didn't want to leave the bear in the car while he was gone, as it may rot, as one would do. You don't leave a dead bear in your car. So now, since a lot of people had been killed near Central Park with new bike lanes and such, he thought it would be funny to leave it in Central Park as people would associate it with a, uh, along with the dead bikers. Yes. The mm. end. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the story. How did the bikers die? With cars hitting the bikers, oh, I, I see. guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, b- bike lanes, bike lanes in, oh, okay. the, in the day, whenever it was. Well, well I like that part where he got ahead of another happened. bear story. That was good, too. <laughs> mm. Double bear. Yeah, and it's, yeah, what I had heard, you know, he had this story and it was uncovered, as you say, by a, a, a newspaper. And then again, to get in front of it and. Do you really think it's that big a deal? Like, it's just bizarre. But No, I don't think it's a big deal at all, yeah, except yeah. That, that, that all of a sudden, J- RFK Jr. and a yes. dead bear story was trending. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like, well, and, 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 you it know. It was almost prankish. Like, yeah. You know, so what's the big deal? But. Except that the, he's got, he's running for president. Yes. Yes. There's that. It. And uh, mm-hmm. my part was kind of like, uh, there's a dead bear in Central Park associated with the presidential candidate, and it's not even close to the weirdest shit that's happened. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, right. It's not well, even, that's it. It's there, not even yeah. remotely close. It's like, what? And then, of course, you know, mm-hmm. there are people online going, hey, I didn't have a dead bear in, in Central Park in my bingo card. <laughs> yeah. There's so much other stuff associated with him that uh, this oh, shouldn't yeah. be the, we had the spiders cider. in his the brain. The other stuff should be, uh, yeah, yeah, spiders in the brain. But just in general, yeah, it was the a whole worm. Thing is, it was a worm. It was not spiders. Oh, was Did it a worm? I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a worm. Yeah. <laughs> Did we talk about that other story too? Apparently, he got a hold of Trump and he said, "Give me a big job in your administration, and I'll come out of the race and tell all my people to go your way." Um, apparently, Trump declined. But yeah, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he's got enough. Uh, he's got a percentage of the the popular vote right now. Could so swing it, yes. He, he could swing. There, he could swing mm-hmm. it one way or the other. But mm-hmm. yeah, but, you know, obviously morons and whack jobs, um, you know, would follow him or would support him. So of course he would eat into Trump, which would be good. Which I'm yeah. why I'm surprised Trump maybe didn't entertain yeah. you know the offer. Morons and whack yeah. jobs and dead bears and babies, <laughs> bees. Yeah, the um, the yeah. Well, you've anyway, got a, you've got a choice this. between <laughs> between candidates for your moron right. and whack job vote. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. So anyway, so now he's got, she's she's. I don't know if you heard Dan. She's picked uh, Tim Walls of Minnesota as her running mate. It's Walls is how Walls, you pronounce it. Tim Walls. Walls. And uh, we'll see. One of the things about him is she's fifty nine. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's 60, but he looks like he's 75. He's got that sort of dad look, yes, grandpa look, yes. which is great because it's going to because, you know, again, we kind of have two young candidates. And and interesting. Is it interesting? I was on the Fox uh, website and then CNN sort of does this, too. But every, every time CNN puts up a picture of Trump, it's like some kind of bad angle. <laughs> you know, oh, it's a course, bad angle. Yes. And he looks kind of weird. But mm-hmm. uh, the picture that. Uh, Fox had up yesterday of Kamala Harris. <laughs> Holy shit. You really got to go out of your way to make her look bad because she's a very attractive woman. Uh, but the picture they had in her was just bad lighting and her skin was all <laughs> fucking. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful source of information. Oh, I'll yeah. go there, you know, after the show to find out all the horrible things this vice president has done now. This vice president. Uh, Oh, yeah, the Whatever candidate. Um, oh, yeah. Tomorrow, on the, <clears throat> listen, we uh, thank our Stuart Reynolds coming on the show today. Our One more show tomorrow. Uh, Biff Naked is our guest. And um, th- I, we, we'll accept a few last-minute stragglers or whatever for our uh, pizza party beer tasting on the patio tomorrow at Lakeshore, uh, 866 Lakeshore Road West, uh, Stonehugger Brewery. But today is kind of like your last day. We're going to send the list over there. 
Uh, Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com if you want to be there. And hey, cr- fingers crossed, Nick Inus will be there. <laughs> oh man uh, what's the address again <clears throat> what is the address what's the address again i'm not sure if i got that uh, did you tell me the address I, th- I did i just say it now yeah you did did i slur it no i'm okay. just asking what the address it's 866 lakeshore road isn't it 866 yeah yeah mm-hmm. all right now you're questioning now you're making me question everything no no i'm sorry i didn't mean to do that no no i, I thought i was doing, doing, a, bit. I was doing a bit and he didn't pick i didn't know but i didn't get the so bit but that's fine. I'm, I'm not. I can't. I can't get all the bits. Uh, no. Dan will be there. Uh, um, what? Where are you going? Are you going to go home after the? What are you doing after that? Because you got to go all Me? the way back down. Yeah. Uh, I haven't really planned it out, but probably going to go home. Yeah. All right. Well, so, you know, yeah. it's only a couple hours. By the way, I'd like to apologize to Abraham Schum because it's his theater week, and I. I oh, I, you missed I, it last. I missed it. So well, because Abraham you woke up Schum. and thought there's no show today. Yeah, I did do that, and. Uh, you know, I just I was just in a hurry and didn't uh, really think about the Abraham Schum. Well, let's theater. let's you know what we'll do it today and tomorrow. It'll Figured be great. Out, yeah. All right. So my apologies. Yeah. I'm. But you know what? On behalf of Ibrahim, apology accepted. Uh, Freddie, any last thoughts here before we go? Uh, no. Nope. Uh, you know, fun times. Some good laughs today. Some uh, <laughs> serious uh, and profound thought. And uh, look forward to yeah, tomorrow. Listen. Tomorrow's show and tomorrow's party. Think about this today. You found out that you weren't conservative. <laughs> oh, right. <yeah. laughs> you don't tell me what I am, so you're telling me what I am. <laughs> All right, relax. Uh, this episode of Humble and Fred was brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chambers Plan, Boron One, Bodog, and Lender's Choice Mortgages. For contests and comments, we read all of the emails, Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. Tell us what you think, Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. And something you can do to help us out is maybe write a review, uh, select the uh, top number of stars or hearts or whatever it is to rate this podcast. We would love it. Or Humble and Fred from the Abraham Shum Zoom Theater. I'm Dan Duran. And remember, if you are a moron or a wax job, you are welcome. And we hope you enjoy every gore damn day. Bottles and cans, just clap your hands, just clap your hands.